so guys, we'll go and get started. I think we'll have some people, I know that like, got a couple of people the last minute canceled, uh, just which I love. If you ever can't make it, just let us know. We appreciate it. It helps us yeah. let us know what kind of what's happening. Um, but what we're going to talk about is uh, definitely WVC. We've got a lot um, to go through. So what we're going to do is everyone raise your glass. First of all, what is everyone drinking? I got a little tequila. I wish I had that. <laughs> Everyone's got to have it on. Okay, so what are you drinking, drinking over there, water. Jeremy? Water. Staying oh, healthy. Water. Hey, oh, see, he's starting off the right way. Okay, so yep. our toast tonight is going to be, you know, there's the old saying, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Brenda and I are encouraging us to take what we learn in Vegas and spread it with the rest of the profession. So cheers, everybody. Cheers. My husband's looking at us going, what kind of party are you having in there? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's a good time. Um, okay. kind of party, for sure. I don't get to go. <laughs> oh, man, I'm getting kicked to the curb. Um, okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about, we're gonna go through and we're gonna invert this a little bit because uh, we wanna talk about the networking and the food, uh, if we can. We now know that Four Seasons has the best bacon, according to Brenda. But we wanna <laughs> go through does. Does. the best places to eat inside Mandalay Bay. So can everyone tell us what they think are the best places inside Mandalay Bay to eat? Well, um, you can't go wrong with Border Girl. Okay. Uh, Border Girl. Okay, yes. I agreed. I never think to walk up that way, but that's good. Oh, and they do have Classe Azul, by the way, there. Oh, well, that's exactly well, and, right. and there's that um, bar outside down on, by the pool. Oh, but it's always cool. like we're always freezing so do we think it's going to be nice enough we can actually go to the bar i haven't even checked the weather to see i'll do that while you guys do it so, okay, so 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 i might be me from minnesota i might be able to well, you might be able to you think i would be able to being in chicago <laughs> jeremy where's your favorite place inside mandalay bay to go eat i have never been to wvc or vegas even so that's really oh what Oh my gosh. Okay. Then we have extra tips for you that we are going to help you out like big time. That is awesome to know. And Stacey, right. I, I saw you just joined in Stacy. If you can like get your phone working. 57. Eh, I could have a hot coffee. Um, it's 69 one of the days. Other than that, it's cold. So, so Stacy, if you can either write it in the chat or uh, let us know verbally the best place to eat inside Mandalay Bay. So if you can let us know that. What we will tell you, Jeremy, is it's a freaking longest haul between <laughs> the hotel rooms. Are you staying at Mandalay Bay or where are you staying? Um, no, I didn't get in in time to get there. I am at... Are you at No, hold on, let me find it. Oh yes, I am at Mandalay Bay, sorry. Which one is the conference at? It's in Mandalay Bay. So it's where your conference. elevators are, you have to haul your butt Mm -hmm. literally like I almost it's not it's not a mile it's a half mile three quarters if of you're mile. wearing if you're wearing, wearing heels it feels like a mile because there yeah. are cobblestones that will so Jeremy leave your stilettos at home yeah uh, okay, make sure you've got good but, but I will say dress those, shoes those open up room in the carry on though so that's good <laughs> well but I would say the dress shoes that have the slicky bottoms they'll take you out too on yeah. that cobblestone it's just not safe um it's so <laughs> oh my guy sound like a mother um but no so you'll spend a lot of time going back and forth because that's where all the exhibit halls are but right outside the elevator bay is uh what is called hazel's coffee and hazel's coffee is becoming a common meetup place for people to have meetings because the starbucks is a nightmare and there are two starbucks just and hazel like turns into a bar in the evening so it's it kind does. of like a dual purpose you it does like Right. So, yeah. Stacy, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I just, I can't get my camera to be in the right place. Yep. Okay. So, Let's so, see. and whoever's our iPad, someone tell me who the iPad is. So their names, because it just says iPad. So mm -hmm. if you put it in, so we know who you are. But yeah. Stacy, what is your favorite place to eat inside Mandalay Bay? Inside Mandalay Bay? Um, Oh, I have to one. think about that. There's a place that I've eaten at a couple times that looks kind of like a Floridian place. It has a pretty window view, and I want to say there's palm trees out the window. It's I've had lunch a couple times and breakfast there with a client. 
Is it the, the one in the Four Seasons? It's Veranda. No, it's not in the veranda, although I've, I've eaten there too, and that's good. This one is like a, it's more of like a tropical place. Mm, mm. I am wondering, is it outside the, is it Ariel or uh, uh, Air, the, whatever that name is? And then they have in their back of that place is, is got different seating and you feel like you're in tropical? Then that, that's I just, awesome. it's got like a big window view and you look out. I want to say it's like, it kind of reminds me if you've ever been to the Grand Floridian at Disney World. I don't know why, but that's what, that's what this place reminds me of. I think or it's like the Crystal Air, or, or Palace. Or Defleur. Oh, is it Defleur? Is, is that still there? No, the Cafe Lefleur. It's not, Def, it's not Defleur. Huh. Now we're going to all have to look it up. Yeah. But it gives you some really good, so that's good. So everyone's given the options. Now let's talk about outside of Mandalay Bay. Wait, I want to give one more inside oh. kind. Of, you want to get a little bit away, the Delano restaurant is a really good place for breakfast or lunch too if you want to go somewhere a little more quiet it's a little bit of a walk but a lot of people are starting to stay at the delano so depending upon who you're meeting with or you Their know breakfast is a great place for a quiet confidential if yeah. you need to be talking about stuff that you don't want other people to hear about yep <sighs> that is a great place so uh, there there is a secret passage and and julie oh. i want to share it yeah do it okay, okay. all right because now, keeping in mind, I am a veterinary technician with large animal experience. And so when I am in what I call the cattle shoot, it's ridiculous. So that's that, that's that cobble piece that goes from Mandalay Bay through yeah. the casino to the cobblestones, okay? Now, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure why people just, they just continue to go that way out. They I, just, I just found it. It's called the Seabreeze Cafe. Oh, ah, Seabreeze, sea yes. Okay. So there's alternatives to the cattle chute, what I call the cattle chute. And? So you can go down, there's escalators when you go past the Starbucks, there's escalators that go down and around and then bring you back up by the- Are you kidding the, me? No. I, oh, I, is that where they had like the, the um, are there stairs right there just past it? Is that where there that could, other, there could like, be stairs? There's, there's an escalator, escalator and stairs. Yeah. There's an oh escalator and stairs, but it comes up by the office. But that's not the best piece. So that's under it. So you can see all the people are going above you in yeah. what I call again the cattle chute. But what's the most beautiful piece is that you go down from the Mandalay Bay where all of the elevators are and go down to the spa spot. The spa spot. Okay. Now you have to remember, I've been going to these things for a long, long time. <laughs> Um, and I'm a very uh, creative, exploratory kind of gal. So when you go down to the spa spot, you can go around to all where all of the um, pools are. So you meander outside. Get air. And there's nobody else there. You'll you know meet all of the the folks that work there, and they're like. Shh. You guys, that's huge. And you'll find, is it faster too? Because you're not having to do the cattle call. Oh God, exactly. And it's lovely and it's quiet and you'll see um, swans. I've seen trumpeter swans in there. And it's just, it's our secret pass. Okay. Oh, I love that. <laughs> that, that, is, okay. that I want to be sure awesome. I got this right. So Rebecca, you take the elevator from the Mandalay all the way to the spa level. Yep. And then you wander on that way. Then the other one is by the star, is it the Starbucks kind of over by the going it's, into the convention center. But it's not, is it that Starbucks on the cobblestones or is yes. it? Okay, okay, so you go to yeah. Starbucks for the cobblestones. And, and then, then go down, down under and it, the, you'll walk under, under the cattle chute and then come up where the office is, where yeah. the, like, like an office depot or an, a Fed Express, I'm not sure what it is. It's okay. FedEx, yeah, the it FedEx, FedEx business. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That's brilliant, love that. That's yeah. so I'm just going to stand at the bottom and people can pay me for the secret passage. <laughs> well, and pay attention to those, uh, Jeremy, because this is, it does, after a while, you're like, oh, good Lord. Ridiculous. It's just, it is a bit of a nightmare. Um, there was a time when there was like 15,000 people in that, remember, um, Julie, like um, Keller Williams was there and then there was a basketball. Oh, it, oh, oh that yeah. Was that was the, was that that the was a, It used to be the same reason as Magic, too, the big um, fashion yeah. show. Yeah. which also had like it was always interesting to me because you'd have the veterinary industry looking like <laughs> veterinary industry looks and then you had all these people who are from the fashion industry who look like fashion industry people look and it was this culture clash 
in every restaurant. I always thought it was really fascinating. I could go both. Now ways. we have the volleyball people, and they'll be back this year too. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, so let's talk about networking. So, Jeremy, as a first timer in the evening, when you've done your dinner, there are basically two or three places if you have time that you or now it's three actually or four to walk <laughs> through so that you can be seen and do your like who's there that you may not have seen, right? So let's see if, if everyone's smart enough to think of all of them. What's the first one? The eye my, candy. The eye, eye candy. candy. Eye candy. Yep. Hazel's. The Four um, Seasons Bar. The what? Yep. Four, Four Seasons, Seasons Bar. Bar. Four Seasons Bar. And, and then the, the Skyfall. The, the Skyfall is a good bar too. That Ooh, upstairs. Yeah. Where's By that? The Delano. By the oh, Delano. that's what I'm saying. Del I was going to say the Delano has yeah. got the other bar that is, they close earlier, but the Delano definitely has. Are you seeing the one that's way up on top? Yep. Oh, that's gorgeous. It's, it's yeah. cool. It's worth the trip just to go see the view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you definitely have to get different. up there, Jeremy. If you've never been, it gives you this great uh, overall view, which is fantastic. But if you walk, the, those bars, the, the uh, Hazel at night and then Eye Candy are just in the Mandalay Bay. So you're never leaving the building. Um, but it's a great place to just wander by and, uh, and then you see people that you're like, oh, I've been meaning to talk to you um, yeah. as you're doing it. So obviously a couple of events, Bridge Club has their event. Um, uh, we've got two events. So we've got the Bright Minds, which is on Sunday night for networking purposes. And I'm gonna have you guys chime in on a few others of the networking. Uh, and then we've got Buy Your Own Beverage on Monday from 4.30 to 7. Uh, so we're just gonna be in the Four Seasons Bar, but the one for the uh, Bright Minds is gonna be at um, the House of Blues. Um, you'll be happy to know, Stacey, we have security this time, so everything is safe. You don't have to uh, have a body shield. Um, all is good. Um, so we'll be having that one. And then what else is happening? What are the other big networking ones? The president's reception. And yep. that's... Yeah. Yeah. But, and then what, yeah. what else is going on? Because there was a few that we had on our calendar, Brenda, that we can't make it to because we'll be busy. Well, there's Morris Animal Foundation always does a little reception, but that's the same time as our meetup basically on Monday. So I'll be holding down the bar. Yep, I'll be holding down the bar. Yeah, trust you can do that well. I, I'm um, good at it. It's a talent. It is a talent. There's like yeah, there's the Bracky. If anybody's going to the Bracky reception, I believe that's Tuesday, this time. Um. Analytics, well, analytics that you just yeah that's on Tuesday yeah, morning. Right? Up on on um, Monday, but really great um, data on the veterinary profession, and they they request one hundred and twenty five dollars. So it seems like a lot, but it's all for the charity. It's all for the charity that that analytics and the animal health corridor do. So every year they give all the money from their event to um, a worthy charity that has to do with with the promotion of animal care, which is kind of nice. Any other receptions that you guys are aware of that we should be spreading around? I gotta check my schedule. I know I'm totally drawing a blank right now. I should have come with I a cheat. What was I thinking? No, it's all good because those are the hard ones, and a lot of them are the invitation, like invitation only. Um, there is one, Brenda. It's um, um, it's on our calendar, and it was um. Hang on, let me quickly. There was another one that you and I both cannot do. Um. Was it that one or was it here? Is it a um, AAIV having anything at WBC? They sometimes do. They, they are, I'm scheduled for that. I'm trying to remember what day it was. And then what's the McGowie Mansion event? Is anybody going to that? I have no idea, huh? -uh. Like somebody rented a mansion, the McGowie Mansion? Oh my gosh, really, wow, interesting. Sounds like an offsite event, obviously. <laughs> which is not bad, which is not bad. So what are the places, uh, back on the food thing, what are the places to help Jeremy out that he should absolutely go to off-site? What days are you there, Jeremy? I get there Sunday afternoon and leave Tuesday afternoon, so not very long. Yeah, and he's already booked for Sunday night at our event. Wrigley. But the ability to like walk out, you, you definitely, if you can do one thing, I would just say get up in the morning and walk down the strip. I mean, uh, just to walk down so you can see all the craziness, I think is really important. But I will yeah. say one of my favorites happens to be the Eiffel Tower, only because you get that beautiful view of, of uh, the Bellagio water show. 
Um, so that's one of my absolute favorites. I did check on Hell's Kitchen. There are no reservations left. So if anyone that's was trying to be able to go eat at Hell's Kitchen. I will um, say too that if you like hockey, Steve and I went to um, a Golden Knight game. Oh, fun. Oh, Here's did you? Just like a little um, Vegas show. <laughs> really? It is. It was fun. Yeah, interesting. So Aer Aerosmith is playing there, and so is Gwen Stefani. Oh, wow. Well, and there's a brand new show. So if people are fans of Absentee, if you've ever gone to that um, kind of, you know, they always call it like a um, uh, vaudeville kind of show with uh, really got a lot of language. We'll just put it at that. <laughs> and a lot of nudity, but very, very, very funny. Um, they have now got a new show um, that's now at the Venetian called the Atomic Salon Show, and it just opened up and it's with rave reviews. So if you're wanting to go to a new kind of show, it's one of the new ones that has just opened up in Vegas. Huh. Um, but I would say go with someone that is uh, a really good friend. So maybe not a business associate. Um, <laughs> um, watching yeah. nakedness with your business associate. Yeah, that may not be, um, that yeah. may not be good. Um, so on the, the entertainment stuff though, and I know, see, Stacy always shows up at these and these are all going to show up on the, her Facebook page afterwards and we'll be like, oh man. <laughs> so <laughs> there's, Venus Williams is having her lunch on Sunday and it's first come first serve. So it is, uh, get it, serve. Um, uh -huh. So that one. Then so, there is Sherry Shepard, which I found interesting. She is the keynote. Who was Sherry Shepard? Was she like from The View or something? She was from The View, yeah. So she's from The View. Um, and so she is Sunday evening. And then Brett Eldridge is on Tuesday. So there's definitely good entertainment. They're not, they're not chintzing on the entertainment. It's no Keith Urban, but okay. Well, no Keith Urban. I will give you that one. <laughs> Um, you got to meet him last time, Brenda. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. We had a great time. He's out. going up at our video, too, on purpose. Yeah, he is. <laughs> but give a shout out to Julie for that, because if it weren't for Julie, I would have not had a ticket to that. So thank you, Julie. Well, yeah. Um, so I, did, I did put in the chat, it's the first one, and it's the list of all the speakers. So I'm going to have, because uh, I know um, Rebecca is speaking. I don't know if anyone else is speaking. but I'm I, speaking. You are? What are you talking Monday. about? Employee retention. Oh. Yay. What Monday time? afternoon, three o'clock. Oh, okay. yeah, that's, <laughs> right. that's not good. That's not bad. You should get a good crowd for that. Yeah. That would be really good. Is that the only one you're doing? Yes. Okay. Only one. Way to go. Way to go, Stacey. That's awesome. That's absolutely awesome. Rebecca, when are you talking? Uh, uh, Tracy Dowdy and I have a workshop on Monday and it's show me the money. So we're talking about how do team members impact that positive um, bottom line and how can they, they um, be more a part of that. So we're talking about limiting beliefs. What do we bring to the table as individuals in our ideas of money? That's always a tricky one. And then we move it around and, and start talking about, okay, now that we understand, we have limiting beliefs, like I'm not in it for the money. I mean, we feel, we all have said that, I'm not in it for the money. So what does that do to us internally? You know, so we're saying I'm not in it for the money, but hey, I need a raise. <laughs> That's difficult. That, there's a lot of turmoil in that. Um, so her what and I do- time is that one? Uh, oh, 10-ish. Oh, in the morning, good, okay. It's, it's week, it's still a week away. <laughs> Barely. Barely. <laughs> um, and then we do a, there's a, a round table group discussion outside of the workshop on this, on this idea of show me the money. How does a team in talk about that? And how do you take taboo to tool, right? Because money is a tool and how do we recognize that? How do we value it? How do we have conversations yeah. around our team with it? Um, it's going to be awesome. I'm really excited about this. And then on Wednesday, the same day that Stacy's, I'm presenting in the morning on the NAFTA track about new trends for veterinary technicians and how can they embrace some of these new ideas in telehealth, telemedicine, the idea that um, there's such a shift in the veterinary um, 
veterinarians delivering specialty care, how do veterinary technicians um, offer that specialty as well? Um, so a lot of data-driven information on that. And then hospitality in hospitals. How do we create that for our teams? How do we embrace hospitality? Oh, I like that. So you do have quite, you have a full, you have a full deck of what you're presenting. That's amazing. That's really cool. You can be rather um, busy. Rather busy. I, I, that's where I, that's where I love to shine. I, I enjoy having conversations, creating those topics, creating the space for people to interact. Mine, mine are not lectures by any means. Mine are interactive experiences. So Julie, tell them, tell them. Yeah, don't go to Rebecca's sessions unless you wanna work. And <laughs> oh, okay. well, absolutely not, yeah, then there you no, go. She does a good job. I love it. I mean, it's all about keeping people engaged. That's fabulous. Yeah. It needs to be, it needs to be uh, very, very fun. I will say, speaking of the telemedicine, I mentioned to Brenda, I did do, so I gave you guys the one link. There's another link and I can put it in there where you can search by topic. Mm -hmm. I was surprised at some of the lack of topic uh, uh, coverage of really important things. There are only two um, uh, sessions on telemedicine. Um, which I was surprised about um, that are labeled for telemedicine. Uh, I mean, obviously you're covering telemedicine in your role with the, the technicians, but that are actually covered that way. I was really surprised. I was, uh, couldn't believe that. So Good to I know. Mean, I'm wondering what else is in the tracks though that are, oh yeah, I see it. Thanks, Brenda. I'm wondering what else is in the tracks that, that uh, is really popping. I think cannabis was, but I didn't spend a lot of time in that. Cannabis is everywhere, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's like truly, I think the hottest trending topic right now in, at these conferences. So it's kind of crazy how everybody, everybody wants to know what they don't know. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Jeremy, when you go, what are you hoping to see and do? I uh, really haven't had a chance to sit down and look at the schedule yet. It was more about uh, just meeting up with people there for BIS purposes, mostly. Yeah. And, meeting up with all of our sponsors again, checking in with them and catching a couple of our speakers. And then as much of the program as I can make it to, I will, but it was, I'm there for working on BIS stuff mostly. That's the hard part, right? I mean, if there's so much good networking to be done, it's hard to get to any of the sessions really. I always find I have a hard time even ever getting to the exhibit hall floor for that very reason, because you want to meet with people while you're all there in the same place. Right. It's, yeah. you know, but we don't want to stay a week and a half either, you know, or from yeah. starting. It's because Stacy, are you going in for vet partners early? I'm leaving tomorrow morning. Oh, bless your heart. Yeah. I'm there for eight days. How about you? Are you going there too? I am not. So I am leaving Saturday and then coming back on Wednesday. And I think that's too long. So I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's one of it's those. It's a long time. Ugh. And I, I really encourage you to take Rebecca's advice then and get out and walk because that's <laughs> the problem with being there is you can be there that long and never go outside. Yes. Ever. Yes. And then yeah. you're like, oh my gosh. So ugh. that's the, that's the worst part about the whole thing. I'm, I'm going to be excited to hear Jeremy's point of view after. <laughs> Well, if you've never been and you're going for a conference and you're going to feel a little like old home week because you're going to see so many people you know, so it's going to make it a little different than just going somewhere you don't know anybody, right? right. Um, and it's so big. It's so it's big. Big. <laughs> It's just crazy. I mean, really, things are everywhere. And I'm telling you, one thing I will absolutely say, Jeremy and everybody who's been there knows that there, there are 9 million restaurants, but you cannot get a damn reservation in a single one of them. <laughs> I mean, it's literally impossible to get a reservation if you wait until the last minute. So then you're like, I guess I'll have noodles again because the noodle place always seems to be available. And the, you know, place yeah. it's, it's, or what's that American bar? You're like, I, I think I can just get a drive by sandwich and just yeah, you can do carry out from there. Yeah, I've, I've learned that. But I've, I've, I have, um, I have eaten a lot of Starbucks type food when I've been there before because it turns out that's about the only thing you can get. How many yogurts and sandwiches can you possibly eat? But you know. Well, there's a food court too outside of the exhibit hall. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's really true. Yeah, you do need to make. But it I, I had to make, I had to make my reservations a couple of weeks ago. If you want real food, you do. Real food's not ever my priority, so I'm okay with that. But for the people who really want to eat, it can become a problem. Yeah. I, I know of folks that make reservations on the strip, so you just get 
the the Uber and then you go to the Strip, which is a total different, or not off the Strip, like Old Town um, Vegas. Yeah. So go to Old Town and have that experience, you know, where the canopy is for the lights and that kind of thing. So it's it's getting you out of the conference. It's getting you away from that electricity that's so intense. Um, and, and then you get to see a different side of Vegas. If uh, you have time, there's a lot of traffic to getting over yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Build in, oh, and that's the other thing. Between meetings, build in that 30 minute commute of the walking. Don't think you can get anywhere oh, yeah. in five. And I will say, I think people did a much better job at, in Orlando with that. I didn't have people really late. Even I think, Julie, you said to us, listen, you better give me a good 30 on each side. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I think everyone did a really good job, at least that we met with that were very like they planned it appropriately. Yeah, to be able to have enough commuting time. When that first time that they changed over to the convention center was not a good deal. <laughs> it was hard. That was a little more challenging. A little and then more. you figure out you just like have all your meetings in that one little bar and yeah. have everybody with you. <laughs> bar. Look at our schedule. We're never leaving. Hazels, or yeah. we're never leaving the Four Seasons bar. Yeah. That's the only Hazel places Seasons you and I are. <laughs> if you are looking for us, it'll be Hazel or the Four Seasons bar. Yes. I do hope to make it all the way down to the convention center at least once. I would like to see, I always like to see how the big companies are investing in the profession from that perspective. Because mm -hmm. um, it's definitely shifted a great deal over the course of the last five years. So I always like to see who's still putting the money out, who's not. You know, the fact that Bear was still uh, doing uh, a bigger booth, but they definitely went down. And then I think this is their last, right? Is that right for Bear? I think so. That yeah. means the card, the card trick guy is going to be out of a job then. I know, and he's been there for <laughs> years. And I just I'm yeah. like, I wonder if Lanco is going to pick him up or somebody else. But uh, literally, the man is there every single conference. Yeah, every single admit they, they, they found something, they stuck with it, and he's yeah. always been there, which has been fantastic. So, um, but no, so from that perspective, I don't want to hold everyone really late. But I just, is there anything else people want to add? Because this is going to be a fun show. Lots of fun, I think. Questions? Wear, wear comfy shoes. That's always the biggest uh, suggestion. Someone's already mentioned it, but wear comfy shoes because you are going to put a lot of miles on. Yep. Miles, not just steps. Yeah. Miles. miles. Uh -huh. and, yeah. and do track it because that's the fun part. I, <laughs> I need to get the my battery recharged. From my understanding, how does this walk compare to going in Orlando, going from the Hilton to the Hyatt? You know, probably similar, right? Okay, because I, I, I had to do that more than I would have. If but you're, the difference was you've got to go outside and you're not having to walk through a casino with smokers. Gotcha. So that's the difference is I would say this year in particular, because I did that Hyatt walk to Hilton a couple times too. It's about that far. I would agree. Yeah. I think it's about that far. It's but just, it does feel like it's over the river and through the woods because you go through the conventions, it's convention center, then you go across through the food court, then you're down the, the cattle chute that Rebecca calls it, then you're <laughs> on the cobblestones, then you're through the casino, and then you're at Hazel, which is pretty much where, you know, people are meeting if you're at the Mandalay Bay. Yeah. Or the reverse, which is you are in the casino. Then you're on the cobblestones. Then you're in the cattle chute. Then you're <laughs> And when she says it is actually an incline, it, and that's the worst part. If you're not prepared for it, and it can, like, slip you out underneath, and you'll be like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to fall. I keep, I've yet to fall, but every time I'm like, it's going to happen. Okay, so any other comments, questions? This is going to be fun, guys. No, I look forward to seeing everyone there. I have to jump off because I've got a 7.30 call. Oops, All right. got to go interview somebody. Yeah. Thanks, Stacy. Safe <laughs> travels. Safe you travels to you. Too. All um, right. And, and seriously, you guys, you'll find us. You'll definitely find us. I mean, I believe you're all coming to our event, I hopefully, on uh, Sunday night. I think uh, is able to come, but I know Jeremy and Julie are coming. Stacy's coming. Yeah. Well, Rebecca, if things change, let us know. I, we kind of know people that might be able to get you on the list. I'm just saying. It'll be a little interesting. I think this one, the, the, our Bright Minds, is the first time we've done a Bright Minds Award, and it's a completely different personality. So Halal Dogan, who founded the Vet Confessionals Project, is a very ethereal, kind of bohemian-y, kind of earth mama, but incredibly, like, dedicated and everything she does is heartfelt and it's just really cool that she has 
I started at a very young age to just like really take action on the things that she believed in. So yeah. Catherine, it'd be kind of fun to feature somebody completely different than our usual icon type people as someone who has really made a difference in the, you know, in the profession. So it's going to be interesting. It is going to be fun. I'm excited for it. I love the venue that we have because we're going to be at the House of Blues in a closed environment. Um, and it's, it's definitely going to be pretty cool. So um, I'm excited for that. I'm excited to see who shows up from 4.30 to 7 when I'm sitting at the bar to see if I'm literally there by myself or people can help. Well, for a little bit, but you definitely have to go to the Morris. So yeah, yeah but you know, it is kind of your day job. Kind of. <laughs> yeah. So I do have, I do have a Quick question on the event page that y'all send out in, or you sent to me earlier. It says five to seven mountain time. Is that supposed to be Pacific time? It's Pacific. Okay, uh, making sure. I'll send it. Yeah. So, so it's yeah. It's supposed to be. Sorry, look at that. But you should just always time. say local time. You know, yeah. because that way it's not east or west or whatever. Yeah. So local. Time. I will say we've we've had some uh, exciting conversations uh, starting to pop for the Birds Club coming up. I will tell you, I spoke with the. Um, the University of, I'm going to pr mispronounce it. Well, is that what it is? Well, yeah. In, in Canada? <laughs> in Canada. I spoke with them today. Wow, are they doing some amazing things. Mm -hmm. And I'm so excited because we're going to be having them come on board and, and have a conversation with us. And then um, March, in case you weren't aware, is going to be Mindful March. And so we have some amazing conversations coming forward in March in all areas of mindfulness that you wouldn't necessarily think of, including I diversity well being, and being yeah. mindful of uh, what we're talking about with regards to diversity. So I'm really excited. We got some really kick-ass stuff coming. So bring our big ideas too, guys. I mean, we rely upon you guys to say, hey, here's a cool topic that either I'm talking about that I would love to share or that I heard about that would be really great content. So, well, Rebecca, I do want to talk to you about the utility of the technicians. I'd like to see if, uh, like what you're going to talk about with that one, with that data. I think uh, maybe if we see each other, I'll uh, dwell in a little deeper on that one because you've got my ears perked on that one. Yeah, I agree. And then, Julie, of course, we're developing some conversations with you. And then Jeremy, we're really excited to, to be at VIS. So we'll be talking with you about our panelists for that too. Which Perfect. is coming along. Yay! So, all right, that's a Brenda's doing the parting toast. So I just want to say heartfelt thanks, obviously, to everyone who shows up to share, to converse, to engage, just to have fun conversation with us. And we, we it really is special to our hearts. So thank you very much to each of you for making the time out of your busy evening. And I love her unicorn. Awesome. I, do, I agree. I agree. <laughs> all right. Cheers, everybody. Cheers,